Uh, and I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll go first to to Maury Young mm -hmm. and allow Miami to give us our closing remarks following him. So Maury Young. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. First and foremost, giving all praise to Hashem, our King, Amen. King of our ancestors, Elohei Abraham, Elohei Yishak, Elohei Yisrael, giving honor to the Bema, Rabbi Shalom Levi, the spiritual leader of Beit Elohim, Rabbi Benyamin Levi, giving honor to the, to the Rabbinite, to all the houses, the elders, the brothers and sisters, I greet you in the tongue of our forefathers, Shabbat Shalom Levi. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah, Baruch Hashem. I'm going to kind of like... Uh, I always love to hear when, when uh, Rabbi Shalom and Rabbi Ben come up, because they always bring things that I'm kind of like thinking about, you know, and uh, what Rabbi Shalom will just discuss is very heavy, because when you read the first line of the Sidra here, it starts off, Why Dabir Elohim El Moshe Wayomir Elayo Ani Hashem. This is the only line in the Torah where you see that terminology uh, uh, with this act, divine attribute actually used in this context. Usually you see why the bear Hashem El Moshe in the more. Yeah. You don't see why the bear um Elo Elohim and whatnot. This is the only instance in the Torah where this is actually brought down this way. The rabbis of blessed memory bring it down that is because this is the what we call the Midat, Hadin, the attributes of justice like Rabbi touched upon. Elohim is the attributes of justice because the creator created the world with justice. Amen. The reason that it's brought down in this section, let's take a look at last week's parasha. In last week's parasha, what was Moshe doing? The creator was charging Moshe, telling him to go out and do a particular job. He was denying it. Denying it so much to the point that he forgot to perform Brit Milah on his own son and almost got killed. But the intricate part about it is, even though it says, Why Dabir Elohim El Moshe, Why Yomir Elah Ani Hashem, is to show you that uh, Shem Hashem, that Rabbi Shalom was talking about, is the Midat HaRachamim. It's the attributes of divine mercy. How do we know these are the attributes of divine mercy? This is a name that's in all, all capacity. This is the attributes of attributes. All the attributes are contingent within this one name. This is the only name in the Hebrew, the only attribute that we cannot personalize. You can say my, my God. You can say our God. You can say uh, uh, various different ways of uh, Adonainu, our Lord. But in terms of personalizing the Tetragrammaton, the Shem Hashem, you cannot personalize that. You understand? You cannot personalize this, this particular name. So this is how we know this name is the attribute of mercy. I come from a school of thought. Uh, my teachers was, was out of Benizakim, mm -hmm. which is the, the line of Nasi Yaakov and Chief Simeon Roshamon, which is my principal teacher, one of my teachers, my principal teacher. He used this divine utterance because when you go amongst the various different Israelite Kinesio, you hear frequent use of these names. But my teacher did something particular with me. He said, you see how we pronounce that? That's wrong. You shouldn't do that. So I'm saying, wait a minute, but you saying it how are you telling me I can't say it? Because he wanted me to further carry it. So as I got older and I did my research, I researched the Mazarets. The Mazarets were the actual ones who put the actual points, the vowel points, into the Hebrew. Our Torah looked at very much like our scrolls that we were reading from earlier. Did not have the vowel points in it. When the Mazarets put in these particular vowel points, they put under Shem HaShem, the vowel points of Adonai, when you deal dealing with the Midah HaRachami, so it would be pronounced a certain way. In the book of Yekeskel and other books of the Torah, you see where they put the vowels of Elohim under the Shem HaShem. When they want the Tetragrammaton to be pronounced Elohim, Christians, <laughs> heretics, later on came, took this, and read it a certain way. Now, in our return to the Creator, as Israelites, in our shuva, us or most of us being Baal shuva, being masters of return. In our return, our people from various different parts of the diaspora implemented, like Rabbi Shalom, Shalom so eloquently said, how they say the name of the Creator. But in the book of Dibre Hayamim, 714, it said, If my people will call by my name, shall humble themselves. Humility is prerequisite. Humility is saying, Listen, I don't know. I'm wrong. 
Israelites don't like to do that. <laughs> if my people were called by my name, shall humble themselves, humble. pray, yeah. seek my faith, because prayer without Shuba is nothing. Prayer without Shuba is nothing, and Shuba has dual connotation. It means to return, and it means to repent, all in the same That's time, right. because they go hand in hand. Yeah. You cannot return if you don't repent. Yeah. You cannot repent if you don't return. Turn from their evil ways. Meaning, when you make shuvah, you're making a, res a resolve that you're not going to go back to your previous errors and sins. Seek my faith, turn from their evil ways. They said, then we were here from heaven. We were here from the Shemaim because believe it or not, when we said the second part of the Shema, we controlled the weather. The Creator gave us that authority. If we did what was right, our crops, the latter rain, the former rain, all those things would be given to Israel. If we did what was right, the whole world is just waiting for us. Yeah. Even Moshiach Ben Dawi is waiting for us just to get it together. A remnant of the creative people. Another point that I wanted to um, bring before I step down. Um, you see frequent use within the early parts, especially in the book of Bereshi, of Mitzrayimah versus Mitzrayim. Now we know grammatically you could draw out grammatical connotation as to why the words are implied in different senses. The rabbis of blessed memory bring it down that in the early stages of Israel's Galu and Mitzrayim, because it was told at the covenant apart to Abraham Abinu that your, your descendants were going to go down into a strange land and was going to be down there for 400 years. Am I right? Yes. Did not the Torah tell us that? Amen. But the thing about it is when they use the terminology Mitzrayimah, Mitzrayimah, when you look at the mem that that starts Mitzrayim and the men that ends Mitzrayim up, they're both open. Meaning that the patriarchs, the Avot, they had a way to come in and they had a way to come out. Abraham Avinu went into Mitzrayim, right? He had drama when he went into Mitzrayim, right? But he got out of there, right? Yishkak Avinu didn't even go into Mitzrayim. Yishkak Avinu had drama with the Philistines. Yaakov Avinu went down into Mitzrayim and lived the last 17 years of his life and it was completely good. The Gematria of 17 is actually Tov. That's, that's the gematria, the numerical value of the 17 is told to show you that our patriarch, our father, lived a peaceful life. As long as Joseph was alive and the brothers were alive, Israel didn't have no drama. But when these men die, the rabbis bring it down. This is where we see exclusively, in most cases, Mitzrayim. Because you had the men that was open, and then you have the men so feet that was actually closed. To show you that it was the Mosai who was going to roar a miracle for us to bring us out of the land of Egypt. Because by this miracle, we as Yisrael were going to be made a nation. We were going to be made a nation. You know, so there's a lot of beautiful things to be brought down. Now we, as Israel, we have to make this shuva. We got to return now. There's a lot of things within our nation that are incorrect and we have to speak out on it. Just like Rabbi Shalom did, because there's a lot of people in the nation that just do things and say things out of habit and out of a lack of knowledge. You understand? And you have teachers in Israel, so the ed educational level has to come up higher. It has to come up higher. It said where there's no vision, the people perish. The people perish. But with that, I'm going to say Shabbat Shalom. I'm going to say, I'm going to say what song? <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all like this one and die with the 23rd song. <laughs> so I'm going to sing the 23rd song. Baruch Hashem. Miss Mole Dawid Adonai Roy Lo Etsar Bino Deshe Yar Bizeni Al Memenu Kaleni Nafshi Shobe Nafshi Shobe Yan Kaini Lemad Le Zedek Leman Shemo Kam Kiele. Hey, my, you're not 